Erwan Okor and Vic Verdier will join me for this live today on this Black Friday. We had many lives, I had many lives this week uh, throughout the world. We started our, our world tour. Uh, we started in Sweden, we went to France, we went to Austria, Germany, we went to Canada. We discussed with our USA colleagues as well. I discussed with Phil from uh, MoveNet Medical yesterday. I also gave my, my point of view on how an event is life changing. And now I'm very happy to welcome Erwan Lecour, the founder of MoveNet, and Vic Verdier uh, also uh, for this live on this Friday. So let me see. I see that Erwan is joining now the live. That's really good. I'm connecting here from uh, beautiful Budapest. It's kind of cold, but it's good. And yes, Erwan is now has requested me to join. I see Vic as well, but I will welcome first of all. And let's see if it works. I think it will work. <laughs> yes, it does work. I think I got <laughs> Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Hi. Uh, I think that's the right orientation for my phone. That, that's the good one. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining on this early morning for you. Of course. I'm happy to. I'm excited. Thank you so much, Erwan. We will have uh, Vic shortly, but just I uh, wanted to remind the audience that Vic will come after, after you. Uh, first of all, we wanted uh, the founder of MoveNet on this Black Friday to, uh, to join us. And uh, very happy, I uh, one that you are, you are back, you know, um, in many, many events at MoveNet. I know you were busy uh, in the last uh, year or years uh, to develop another project of yours. And uh, I just want you to, you know, maybe introduce yourself again to uh, the audience that may not know you because they know the, the MoveNet team, but they may be not very familiar with, with your work lately. Yeah, one, I don't know if it's you, but I cannot really hear you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me well? Yeah. You can, your, your, the audio can, is not good. Uh, in the audience, can you put a thumbs up or comment if you can hear Air One? Because so far I cannot hear you. Let's see. Oh, it's better now. Yeah, my microphone is on. Is on. I'm gonna hold my uh, my. Phone. No, no, it's good. Yeah, it's good now. I, right. Yeah. So, um, uh, well, I'm Rowan Lecour. I'm, I I founded MoveNet originally. Uh, that was officially 2009, but it started it started before already in Brazil and in France. Um, when I I, I I trained really hard and also started to teach this to people and, and talk about it around me until it became a, a reality starting in 2009 with my first workshops in West Virginia uh, and then also the infamous um, feature length article uh, in Men's Health USA in 2009 as well that really propelled MoveNet in the front of a scene uh, of uh, the, the fitness scene uh, it, which back then was literally like a I would say a UFO or a unicorn, whatever we want to call it, in the field of fitness. Like, like what do you mean? We're not just uh, targeting muscles. Uh, we are actually doing real complete movements, uh, natural movements. We go barefoot. We take off our shirts whenever possible. Uh, we, did, we did it all outside back then. It was very, we could say either pure or brutal, or, you know, it was... But, uh, and we still do that, by the way. And, and little by little, we managed to establish credibility. Um, what a lot of people thought was just going to be a fad just established itself as uh, an unmovable element of the, the fitness um, scene. And, and we're here to last because we, ha we have at heart, at heart to be educators in, 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 in movement, in real world, practical movements and making people healthy and vibrant and strong um, that way. So then the team, the team built up and, and then uh, and did very, very well. And I thought, well, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to 
uh, basically create something that would become a method, a tool, um, a lifestyle, all of that, a community for people to use and benefit that I am around or not. And so I made the decision to just you know, uh, slip from the from a, a distance uh, and to let things unfold organically for people, through, through the team, through the community. Uh, and it, it worked wonderfully. And uh, today um, I, I want to, to be part of the of the gang, of the team, uh, again, of the community in a more active fashion. So I'll be back um, teaching some of friends, co-teaching. Uh, you'll hear more of me um, very soon. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, it's been a few weeks that we launched an event that will be a great event, uh, beginning of the year in February in Tulum, uh, Mexico. Uh, we already did that with great success a few years ago, uh, and we will have the entire team. And you will be you will be there, Vic uh, will be there, right. I will be there too. Yeah. And I know that the entire Movna team cannot wait to be uh, end of February tw February 25 until 28. And uh, that's you know if people want to meet you and meet the whole team, uh, that's the that's the big event. Uh, it's already almost sold out. A lot of people signed up already, but just wanted to remind people about that yeah that's what I was pretty excited about um, really excited to reconnect uh, in that way with the team not just on this time, not just talking through a screen but just you know in person uh, because we like to move together uh, uh, we just love to hang out it's a um, it's it's a certain mindset a certain spirit it's a certain heart so very excited and um, can't wait also to, to, you know, be just with people of all levels uh, from, from all over the world. That's the way it started, by the way, in 2009. Yeah. Um, uh, people came really from all over the world, Sweden, uh, Australia, uh, the United States, uh, you know, you name it. And that was beautiful. And um, it, it was... Uh, uh, it's really memorable moments for me, and um, and so back then I was uh, 38, and now I'm 51, and I also love the idea that uh, you know you could easily think, or people could easily think, okay, the, you know the guy now is 50, so forget it. It must be a wreck, he's shot, you know, he's, and actually no, because I've never stopped practicing move now, and because um, it's a lifestyle, and but also um, to demonstrate that. Even as you age, you can age still with your competency, your capability, your mindset, um, your health, um, and it's uh, it's something. Move not is something that you can do for a very, very, very long time. This is uh, the trend we have seen during this uh, week of lives. When I was uh, interviewing all the, the team instructors. Uh, most the most common question we had was, should you prioritize a, a big intense session once a week or two times a week, or rather, you know, little snacks of movement throughout the day? And uh, all the team instructors say, well, we, we like snacks. We like to move throughout the day. We don't really call it that. We we like training sessions, but most of the time we we just enjoy the movement and we improve. And this is what we have seen, this longevity. I always remember one of your interviews, and one that I followed when back in 2011, uh, when you had a lot of PR because you were you started to be very renowned in the U.S. And one thing stood in my mind. Uh, you said uh, stood in my mind. You said uh, an Olympic champion on Sunday evening on the podium on the first place still has to wake up on Monday morning and still has to live his life, you know, on the, for the long term. And you said, I want to be fit at 40, 50, 60, 70. And you are the proof of it now. Yes. Uh, well, thanks. And I think it's a good uh, perspective that uh, we really want to share with a lot of people. If there is that uh, idea that uh, you're supposed to, to physically decline and it's not entirely false, obviously, you know, aging is going to impact you. But it it doesn't have to be that brutal and uh, or fast uh, the way people think not at all 
um, actually, there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, you see people who start fencing at age 80 or uh, running or lifting and they're doing amazing. So in other, you know, types of sports or practices. So showing that indeed um, the moment you move it, you become fit again. You know, you don't need to be fit to move. You need to move to become fit. So uh, as the founder of MoveNet, obviously it is my, my, my duty to represent mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, that information, that statement, that truth and that reality. It, it is my, uh, my responsibility since the moment I uh, launched MoveNet all the way to, I don't know, maybe I'll retire when I'm 80 or something, and maybe not. Um, but you, it's true. You, you know, someone may be elite, let's say, in a specialized sports, and that's beautiful. That's powerful. But in the end, that person owns a body, like we all do, that is going to be um, needing not the, this kind of elite performance uh, for the rest of its life or every day, but simply to be a to be a body, to have a body, to live inside a body that is um, healthy, functional, that's capable of um, many movements, and that is as much as possible pain-free and um, not all stiff and and, and all these, or, or or to become unable to do things like getting up and down to the ground <clears throat> with you know by using your hand or hanging or climbing or running or doing all these things. So our natural movements we're supposed to be able to do them uh, for a long time. So um, that's what you want. Uh, let's let's move that. That's the philosophy behind that. I'm glad you just mentioned the word philosophy because yesterday I did a live on this same page about how MoveNet is a how MoveNet event is a life changing experience uh, because I hear that all the time. You know, I have more than seventy workshops now uh, teaching MoveNet, and every time I hear that, uh, and it's not about the techniques. I always say, if you want to learn a foot and crawl or jump, go on YouTube and you will find our library. We have a MoveNet channel with the, oh, everything is available, but what you get in an in person event is something else is the vision that you you had back then is the philosophy and and why should we do all those movements you know why is it why is it important to understand it's practical and uh, i remember with my level two i took my level two back in 2014 in houston texas because uh, you guys were at the time were uh, uh, giving a bonus day in between level one and level two and i was level one already and i took the bonus day and then I came for this bonus day and then I did my level two and I was like, that's a good deal because I can spend a full day with you, the founder. And uh, actually, we will do this formula again, uh, still in Texas, in Austin, in April, uh, level one. Then we have a bonus day, which we call the, the exploration day with you, uh, Vic, myself and uh, level two. And this, those days are very important because we have time to develop this, yeah. this speech, this philosophy, right? Exactly. Time. Uh, think the... yeah, your microphone again is uh, not so good. Oh, I see. I think uh, it's because it's standing like this. Okay, I'm going to have to hold it um, in my hand. Yeah, it's because we, obviously, we have a, a, a certain amount of, um, of material to make sure to be covered during a two-day, three-day workshop. And so we, we stay on track because we want to make sure that we deliver the entirety of that material to our students. But then a, an extra day, an extra day is to be more relaxed and to really get the time to connect with people, to listen to them, you know, where they come from, what they want, what they need, what they like, what they struggle with, what they want to achieve um, at a more personal level, um, in a more relaxed way of, okay so it's it's all open it's all uh, it's all about the connection it's more about the connection um whereas the first days are you know more structured it's more about the teaching and the, being a student and uh, covering again uh, a particular material so that that extra day is is super enjoyable for all of us the the, the 
the coaches and instructor, instructors and the, the participants and students because of that relaxedness and um, openness, like Q&A and, okay, you want to do that movement or what are your options here? Oh, you struggle with that? Okay, so, and we, not that we don't do that, by the way, uh, to an extent during the, the more formal instruction, but in the extra day, there's just more, more time to do things like that. So it's really enjoyable. The great yeah, so idea, I've... great idea to bring that back, um, uh, you know, as the final point uh, of a, a, f a formal uh, workshop. Now, all I can say, one is that we are very grateful that uh, you know you can still give some of your time to participate to those events. Um, again, every time I teach an event, and people say, I, I like to ask this question to people: How do you know movement? And most of them say. Oh, you know, back then I watched this video called the workout the world forgot. Right. And it's important for people to know that you are the one who did this video back then. People may <laughs> not know it still because it's a old video now, you know? I know. Uh, yeah, 2009. And uh, so it's, it's going to be 14 years. And, um, and again, back then, so um, Instagram, all these things, TikTok, all these things did not exist. Today, we, there are a lot of people that are, um, and I moved back again into the, into the sun, that are uh, displaying amazing things, like on a daily basis, uh, amazing movements, feet, feats um, in any kind of sports, or even things that are not even sports, they're like a you know, just whatever, throwing something on a target or like just incredibly creative and that's super vibrant, that's, that's awesome. But back then, the, there was very little of that. And when I showed that video of me being, you know, almost naked, <laughs> barefoot, uh, just wearing shorts, running in nature, climbing, jumping from rock to rock and, and all of people ever, what, what is this? What is that guy doing? And, is this fitness? You know, can you get fit that way? Or no, you have to be fit already to be able to do that. You can't. So it was really a completely new concept. And in fact, it was new, but it is also very old because that's the way we, we moved in, in, in nature in the past, at least to some degree. And then that's also the way that physical education used to be before we you know, created other methods with machines and all kind of concepts and muscle isolation and stuff like that. So, um, um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm very proud that I, uh, I was the one, you know, when I, to, to get this started because back then nobody knew me, nobody knew this, that approach. And, and when I was there and at that point of, okay, I'm just a, a French dude um, living in France or then living in Brazil. And I have this idea, this crazy idea, like literally like a vision of that one day, a lot of people will practice their body and their mind and get fit in that fashion. And I will make that happen. I will create a method. I will create a, a name, a brand, a company. We'll have a team and it will become integrate part of the fitness scene uh, forever. It will never be forgotten ever. You know, it's that workout will never be forgotten. Um, yeah. It will be there. It'll be alive. It will be alive, not just in um, social media videos. It will be alive in each person, in each and everyone that gets it and be like, yeah, that's the, that's, that's the natural way. That's the way to move. That's the way to exercise. It's, it's human. It's healthy, it's natural, it feels great, it's empowering. And that's all I wanted. That was the vision. It's very, very simple and very pure too, very powerful. And, and you know, I always wonder why this video was so viral, so popular. And I believe that it's because it looked easy. Because <laughs> the way you were moving, you, you had a, you know, a straight face, you didn't seem out of breath. And... It was inspiring for people. I remember watching this video thinking, oh, I can do the same until I tried. And then I was like, all right, that's a bit more difficult. Than I oh, this has, this has tricked so many people 
so many people very good point like oh my god people thinking oh yeah i got this like it's natural i used to do it when i was a kid i still can do it uh no and maybe probably you think you did when you were a kid but maybe not really in that way or to that extent and even if you did but uh, have stopped uh, practicing your body that way for many years maybe decades then your body is uh, it's not ready anymore and uh, your, your brain cannot really operate your body that way so you're gonna have to to learn all this the 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 this uh, relearn and the second um a misconception always was that oh well you can't teach that it's natural so there's no need to teach it or to learn it and it's always been a huge misconception because if you can't understand that for instance if you want to become uh able to to fight or to defend yourself you don't learn that or you don't not uh, how to say how to express it that uh, you do need to learn it. You cannot not have a need to learn to do that. It's like, oh, well, it's just fighting and defending yourself is natural. It just, it will come out of me when I need it, you know, naturally. No. And you're also not going to learn that by just going to a bar and picking on people and be like, yeah, you will fight, <laughs> you know, or in the street and start a fight. And you're like, yeah, that's the way, the natural, pure way to learn how to fight or defend oneself. It's not the way it works. So how do you learn to fight? Because we all have in ourselves some basic ability to defend ourselves. We'll be able to maybe you know, try to avoid, try to parry a, a punch or a kick, and maybe try to punch or kick back, and we try to wrestle and do things like that. So we have those instincts. The same way anyone can, to some degree, run or jump and land and climb a bit and do these things, lift something. It's in us. What's not in all of us universally is the efficiency in doing these movements and these abilities. And so if we can understand that to learn self-defense or fighting, we can go to a person who's going to teach us techniques to become efficient at doing that. Well, then if you apply that reasoning to all the rest, which is running, moving on all fours, running on your back, getting up and down, hanging, climbing, jumping and landing, balancing on your feet, on, on, on all fours, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you're like, oh. So it's like the, uh, the mixed movement art, of, you know, mixed natural movement arts. It's, um, it's a whole set of techniques that I need to learn and then learn to combine together so that I'm able to move in practical ways in the real world. The same way MMA is... Uh, a set of a whole diverse diversity of techniques that you need to learn independently and then to combine together so that you can perform um, in a you know what's almost like a real fight so that's the idea it's, it's very simple but you cannot just think that oh it's natural therefore i'm good at it right away uh, or i don't need to learn anything that's exactly why we are here why we teach and why it works and why people are, you know, scratch their head, be like, I thought this would be much easier. And I realized, oh, oh yeah, I'm holding my breath. Oh yeah, uh, I'm stiff all, all, all over. Or, oh, I'm losing balance here. Or, oh, I lack grip strength. Or, oh, uh, I, I can't figure out how to do that movement. But the once I was given the insight, boom, it was improved right away very much. So that's what we teach. And to know, and to trust that as you practice this, I mean, your fitness is, is taken care of. And you still can use those natural movements to do uh, conditioning in a more conventional way, like repetitions of, you know, pulling a certain way, lifting a certain way, counting repetitions. It's not all organic and instinctive. You can train that way, but you can also completely program uh, and structure your practice for, for best results or, you know, just and if you enjoy to track, um, you know, measure and track uh, uh, sets and reps and, and, and progressions in distance, in weight, in speed, in, in all of that. So it is a, not just a philosophy. Um, the mindset, the approach dictates the way we train, but, but in the end, it's not just a philosophy. It's really a practice and it's an experience. It's something very real and tangible.
Could have said it better. It looks like uh, you created the method. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Hey. Thank you, everyone, so much. And uh, one last thing before we let uh, Vic uh, take over. Uh, you've been also uh, very busy with your some breathful work. You called it breathful work. Uh, and this is part of the, uh, of the Black Friday sale on, on MoveNet.com as well. So I wanted you to say a few words on this, if you could. Yes, breathful work is uh, the new method that I've been working on uh, for now uh, more than three years. Um, and it is a method to teach you to breathe efficiently, but also to hold your breath for a long time, which seems uh, very intimidating to a lot of people. But we, uh, you know, we're teaching this uh, a la MoveNat in a very progressive way um, that is safe, that is actually enjoyable. And it's also, in, in fact, a very unique and powerful form of meditation. Because when you hold your breath, well, the universal response for everybody is to feel, to feel like, uh, wow, that's overwhelming. Um, and how would you even meditate in those conditions? Because it's stressful to hold your breath, at least when you don't know how to, how to do it. And what we teach are not just techniques of the body, of the breathing, or the breath holding, but techniques of the mind so that we, you can regulate what's happening in your mind because in a, in a conventional uh, meditation, you can actually use breathing and regulate your mind by regulate your breathing. Slow breathing. But how do you regulate your mind when you are actually holding your breath, cannot use your breathing to regulate your mind, and on top of that, the fact that you're holding your breath is going to trigger a stress inside, a neurophysiological stress that is going to negatively impact your mind so how are you going to meditate like this? Is it even possible to meditate? At, which is what is meditation? It's to regulate the activity of your mind, which is to, to master your inner experience. And that's what breathful work is all about. Um, it's not just a time uh, performance of, okay, how long can you hold your breath? Which, by the way, is also part of the uh, objective is to be able to hold your breath much longer. My personal, uh, personal best is more than eight minutes. But it's um, regardless of how long you can hold your breath, it's really about, okay, so what happened in you mentally and emotionally as you were dealing with that stress? And if you can learn how to um, handle that stress and to turn it into actually a very beautiful uh, experience of clarity, of emotional s stability and centeredness, then what you're going to acquire there, what you're going to develop, um, it, it's also like some reconnection, some rewiring in your brain. It's literally neuroplasticity that you're triggering, that you're working on. How is this going to affect um, the rest of your life? Because it's actually going to carry over in a positive ways, obviously, uh, to other areas of your life. You, you'll find more composure, more calm, more clarity. And so it's a very powerful way to meditate. A lot of people have told me, I could never meditate before, but this is the first time that I really understand and I really have experienced yeah. what meditation is. It was under that form of stress. And thanks to the um, the techniques of the mind uh, that uh, were learned. Yeah, I've done your course uh, back in April. Uh, it was a live live course of eight sessions. Uh, all those sessions were super complete, very, very comprehensive. And I learned how to relax even better. And it really helped me even my teaching uh, at MoveNet for the breathing uh, aspect of it. So um, I know that you have two... Uh, Two services basically you have the live live course that you will have in January again to the open yes. for people in January. Yeah. And then you have the e course as well, right? The new yes, new exactly. one. Right, exactly. But th those are both options. Uh, last year I did eight uh, groups of like live teaching on, on Zoom. Uh, they were all sold out, very successful, uh, amazing results, amazing testimonials. 
And once I, I saw the, the, the response that was so impressively positive and amazing results with people who tripled, quadrupled, some people multiplied their breath whole time by five, which again indicates that in just a matter of four weeks, which indicates that it was never the, the body, the physiology that was a limitation. It was, it was the, the mind, basically. And once I saw that, um, I told myself, okay, I need to make it an e-course so that people can learn and um, practice at their own pace um, from home. And so uh, the e-course is now a reality. And, uh, but I'm still going to do that live event in January. So uh, again, uh, two sessions a week for four weeks. And then I'm going to start to do some uh, small retreats, uh, three-day retreats. Uh, there's going to be one in Cocoa Beach in Florida uh, in January, and there's going to be more of those too. Uh, that on top of, of course, uh, teaching MoveNet with the team. Um, so, yeah. You're Exciting. not going to get uh, bored in 2023, that's for sure. The what? You're not going to get bored in 2023, oh, that's for I, sure. This program. I, do not, uh, I do not know the concept of boredom. I've never been bored. Um, there are always either things to do or moments to be and just to appreciate life. And um, when you have curiosity or appreciation, uh, your mind uh, cannot ever be bored in this life. It's not possible. Awesome, Erwan. Hey, thank you so much, Erwan. I will welcome uh, Vic. Feel free to stay or not because uh, I know you know Vic uh, by heart. You, you guys were the OGs, uh, like I said, uh, of MoveNet. Oh, no, I man. Let me see if I can uh, welcome him if my button works. Yes, here he is. Hey. <laughs> Hey, Alan, Jérôme, how are you doing? Bonjour, Vic. How are you? Bonjour. Ça va? <laughs> okay. We do it in French. We do it in English. Oui. It doesn't really matter. Everybody understands both anyway. Yes. Oui, oui, monsieur. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a very, very Frenchy ambience right now. Uh, oh, yeah. Give us for our specific accent. We were born like that, and there's nothing we can do about it. And, you know, nobody's perfect. We're but that's, that's actually it. a perfect accent. I mean, all the people who have a, a different accent are wrong. We have the right <laughs> English accent. That's it. Oh, oh that is funny. All right, the Vic. French connection. Uh, the French yeah. connection, but the good one. Yes. Yeah. All right. Vic, so, I'm so happy to, uh, to see you. Uh, I am going to disappear. Uh, from this uh, virtual space, I'm exactly like poof. And uh, thank you so much for joining, uh, Jerome. Thank you so much for organizing this. Uh, it was my pleasure. I wish everybody a wonderful rest of their day, um, and, uh, and I hope to meet everyone in person soon at one of our MoveNet events uh, in 2023. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. I need to figure out how to. <laughs> where's Where's the door? Show me. Where's the door? Yeah, there is a cross on the right top corner or something. That's right. Yes. Bye bye. Cool. Bye. Uh, so what's up, Liam? Hey, doing good. Doing good. Uh, I'm glad we could uh, get there one uh, in this live, and he could uh, remind people who he is because many people, you know, the the new audience don't necessarily know the founder of MoveNet. So it was great to uh, have in his insight, his history, and what he's working on. And same goes for you, Vic, because you're, like I said, you're one of the OGs, uh, yeah. if not the OG of MoveNet with, with their one. And uh, it's great to have you. Uh, you're responsible for many events. You have taught the most uh, amount, the number of events uh, throughout all those years. And uh, Probably, yeah. you're responsible for aquatics and combatives were workshops that I always uh, talk about when I teach level one, level two, because they, they are just great courses uh, that I've done many times with you. Uh, I've been your punching bag for combatives or I was drowning, uh, drowning victim for some uh, swimming tests. 
Uh, but seriously, those are great, great courses. And just wanted you, uh, you know, to uh, introduce yourself a bit for people who don't know you. And uh, obviously, you have an accent from France, but you also uh, spend a lot of time in the U.S. So, tell us a few words about you, Vic. Yeah, I've been I've been in the U.S. for what uh, 12 years now, probably something like that. Uh, I've been with uh, with their one since the very beginning, so 13 years ago. You mentioned that already. Uh, and at the beginning, uh, move that was very small, obviously, and uh, and we managed to uh, to grow and spread the, the world uh, all over the world now. And, and I'm really really proud of the not only of the company itself, but also on the movement, on the fact that uh, people all over all over the world now know about MoveNet and uh, maybe not train MoveNet yet, but I'm pretty sure it will come at some point. Um, yeah, so, what, yes, yes, go on. No, 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 go. Um, so you, you are a master instructor at MoveNet, but you are also, you like to, to do a lot of things. And that's why it's great to have your experience because you, you try to always learn and uh, attend many different courses that, that, may, and that enrich uh, your, your teaching even for MoveNet. Yes, I hope so. Uh, I, I think I'm... Uh... I'm an all-time uh, learner, and I try to do at least uh, one or two certifications a month, uh, and I've been doing that for a very long time now. Uh, so I have a stack of certificates that, I mean, some of them are really useful, some of them are probably not that useful, uh, but uh, two of my uh, real passions are, this part of uh, MoveNet, uh, the combatives and the aquatics. I wrote those two uh, two courses, two certifications, and uh, and they are a bit special. That's why we call them specialties. They are a bit special in the MoveNet curriculum uh, because uh, somehow they are all about survival. Meaning, if you uh, if you don't know how to swim and you end up in the water for whatever reason, uh, you're in a bad situation. If you don't know how to fight and you end up in a fight, a straight fight or something like that, and you don't know uh, what to do, yeah, you're in a bad situation too. So, yeah, I really, really enjoy those two certifications and, uh, and the curriculum. Yeah, th this is what I, I got personally when I joined MoveNet and I started to uh, learn about MoveNet was a boost of self-confidence in my movements, uh, in my posture, in my breathing. And it's just a continu continuity, right, about with aquatics and combatives. It's about to get more confidence, whether you are in the water or whether you face a situation, you know, on the street and you don't know how to, how to deal with it. I really like the fact that it's not, you don't promote fighting. I, I really like this. You, don't, you promote how to get away of trouble. Yeah, it's right. how to survive. How to survive, and there's many ways to survive. I mean, running away is one way to survive, and it might be the best way, depending on the circumstances. Uh, so, yeah, there's some techniques about preventing uh, any bad situation to happen, and there's techniques about uh, what to do when you're in the middle of uh, this bad situation. So when are your next events, Vic, uh, if we talk about everything? You, can you remember all, all those? No. For people to do? <laughs> no, maybe, maybe uh, a combative, first of all. Yes, we have a, we have a combative certification in uh, Seattle, Washington, in the US. Uh, and that's the uh, end of spring. I don't remember the, the exact date, but it's on uh, movenet.com. And we also have uh, a combative and an aquatic in France, in Marseille, at the end of August, and that's for Europe. And we, we always try to have uh, an event in Europe and an event in, uh, in the US every year. And so maybe that's, uh, else at some point, yeah. Was that? I say maybe somewhere else at some point, hopefully. Yeah, I know that uh, I've been in Bangkok uh, and in Asia, uh, they talk about hey, we need to get Vic back in Thailand or in Malaysia. And I'm pretty sure it would be a, a cool event to organize, but 
Right now, it's the US, it's uh, Marseille. It's basically the replay of what we have done uh, this year. That was a great success in Marseille, France. I was with you. Uh, we were there sharing uh, four days over there. That was great. So, you know, if it ain't broke, uh, don't fix it, right? <laughs> this is what you yeah. said. <laughs> so we repeat the same thing. And uh, we'll see each other also in Tulum, Mexico in February. Yes. We'll see each other in Tulum. We'll see each other uh, probably in Austin, Texas as well for a level one, level two certification uh, along with their one, two. Uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty of opportunities to see each other, maybe too many times. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, guys, uh, so just for you to know, this is Black Friday. Uh, we have all those events we are talking about are now uh, on sale. Uh, the biggest sale of the year, it's until Monday midnight Hawaii time, which means in Europe it's uh, 11 a.m. on Tuesday uh, for those who watch from, uh, from Europe. So, you know, jump on it as we, we called it on, the, on our page on the website uh, because those are, are great events. So, Vic, anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? Because, look, I'm in the dark now. Nobody can see me anymore. <laughs> Where do you live? <laughs> far <laughs> too far exactly no thank you thank you very much uh, thank you for doing all those lives uh, uh, I found them very interesting so thank you for that Leon. Uh, you're welcome hey, that has been a great experience and I will wrap this up uh, tomorrow with the world the world team as, well, as I call it uh, tomorrow we'll have uh, Erika from Brazil at the same time we'll have Jack from Australia and Perry from South Africa. So right. we managed to combine the three time zones, which is really <laughs> a challenge between Brazil and Australia. Uh, so it will be uh, 10 a.m. Uh, my time in, in Europe. And uh, that will complete a, a world tour. That has been uh, great. So all the replays are available on, on this page, on MoveNet uh, Instagram page. And I will also post this one with Erwan and Uvik. Thank you again, and I uh, see you at some point. All right. Thank you, Vic, and thank you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye.